Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 84th live stream geometry. We have me and four other people from all around the world uh, with us today. And I'm going to continue going over problems from the geometry uh, and discussion or geometry discussions and problems Discord server. So it's another Discord channel uh, devoted to Olympia geometry and it has some really, really nice problems. Uh, so the problems we did last time were, were pretty hard. Um, so I'm going to start out with a couple easier ones. So um, the Discord channel, it has, it divides it into three sections, like easy, medium, and hard. Or it calls it like primary riddle, middle riddle, and riddle. And riddle are like the hard ones, and middle riddle are medium. So I'm going to start with some of the medium ones, and then if we solve those, then go on to the hard ones. Um, so for those of you watching, if you want to join us in the future, uh, feel free to email me at mgreenb801 at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the description of my video. And we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. So here's the first problem. Can you all see it? Yeah. All right. So we have a triangle ABC with circumcenter O. And M and N are the midpoints of AC and AB. All right. So O is the center. And M and N are the two midpoints. Uh, and then we have the angle bisector, AB. And then we draw the tangents from B and C. So we have like a Semedian configuration. Um, all right. So this is a middle riddle. So it's supposedly easier than the, maybe than the ones we did last week, but we'll see. We'll see if it's really easy or not. Um, all right, so let's draw the tangents. And they intersect at T. And then we, we draw TD. So I haven't seen many problems where it has like TD. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so we draw the angle bisector of MON and we see where it meets TD. So I'm gonna draw this ray and I will draw the angle bisector of this. Does it, I don't think it actually meets on the circle. Uh, and, wow. Uh, oh, no, I don't think it does. I think that's just like an illusion. So like if I make the triangle different, yeah, like if I make it, you can see they don't really intersect on the circle. It's just like um, an option. By the problem stated, it is uh, not in the circle. Okay. Yeah, it couldn't be on the circle or AR wouldn't be tangent. Um, so yeah, how do I draw a diagram where... It, looks farther away. I think the more like closer to obtuse I make it, like that, that looks good. That, but now O and M are like the same point. That's the problem. <laughs> I wanna make it somewhat obtuse, but I don't want O and M to look like the same point. So um, hopefully this will be good enough. Something like this. All right, so I'm gonna make it look a little nicer. So I'm going to make all the lines segments instead. And these are tangents. And we want to show AR is tangent to the circle. So maybe we could use like phantom points and we could instead draw the tangent and like let it intersect TD at R 
and then show that it's an angle bisector. I'm not sure what's the best way to do it, but um, maybe I'll magnify it a little bit just so O and M don't look like the same point. Trying to get the right level of magnification. I think that looks good. All right. So obviously this is cyclic. I don't know if that really helps. And MN is parallel to BC. And this is, I mean, this is also tangent to the circle, right? So we could, we could also just show that AR is tangent to this circle. Um, I don't know if that's any easier or not. Can you draw in the second intersection point? Uh, or not the second intersection point, I mean the second tangent of R to the circumcircle of ABC. And this oh, point. Yeah. Maybe so, it's the midpoint of RBC. Okay. So I think that would be this point. And yeah, it's going to pass through this point, right? Because OA is the diameter of the circle. And you were saying it might be the midpoint of our BAC. Uh, let's see. So yeah, it looks like it is. Oh, yes, it, it should be because um, because uh, F is the midpoint of arc M A N A M because it's an angle bisector. Okay, so, so basically the problem is equivalent to that. Yeah. So yeah, by homophony, yeah, if, if this really was an angle, well, we know it's an angle bisector. So since F is, so that means that angle NOF is MOF, so F is the midpoint of arc NAM, and by homophony from A, E has to be the midpoint of our BAC. Interesting. So that would mean that these would be collinear. So really, it might be easier to redefine the problem. We could let the tangents at A and E meet at R, and then we want to show R, D, and T are collinear. Uh, that might be an easier way. So yeah, we could we could call this like R prime. And we want to show that R prime, T, and D are collinear. But then we don't even need M and N and O and all that, right? So that would allow us to hide all these things. So yeah, this is an interesting problem. Yeah, I've never seen uh, I've never seen this theorem before. But um, let me bring O back. Sorry, I'm trying to highlight just that little. There we go. Yeah. So I could hide a lot of things here. Um, I think I have a solution. Oh, really? Um, because, yeah, I, I use projective geometry. Um, okay. And if we intersect DT with the circumcircle of ABC okay. uh, at two points, then we know that BC and these two points are harmonic. OK. So hold on one sec. Let me do that. So. Um, let me hide this. So um, you're intersecting. So yeah, we, we don't want to draw. So yeah. 
basically you intersect TB with the circle. Ah, sorry, <laughs> this, uh, this is a bit tricky, okay. So, so if TD intersects the circle at G, then uh, are you saying GB, GB um, and, and we draw this too, I guess, right? So you're saying GBHC is harmonic? Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is well known. And now we can project through point D. Okay. And then G and H stays and we get Um, wait, something, okay, I, 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 it's not finished yet, I think. Okay, yeah, we want to show A, A, G, E, H is harmonic. So I think you might have been, it's an interesting idea, though. I think there's, yeah. Oh yes. Uh, no. Can you can you draw on the line B? Uh, which line? B E. Uh, B E. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's equivalent to prove that uh, these three lines concur. Oh, that's really because like C E. Oh, interesting. It's equivalent to proving these concur. Yes. Okay. Because then we can project through this point. I see. Exactly. So AC, DE, and TD. Okay. See, I don't know if there's a way to, yeah, let me think about this a little bit. Uh, I think I have a solution. Uh, it uh, uses trigonometry, and I didn't fill up, fill up all the details, but I think it is not hard to just compute the last thing. You mean to show that these concur? Uh, no, I don't, didn't do anything uh, that you did. It is okay. Uh, different. Okay, what was your idea? So basically, we first convert this to an in-circle problem by drawing, drawing the tangential triangle. Okay. Um, of ABC? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we don't need the circle of ABC. Oh, when you say the tangential triangle, do you Yeah, mean yeah, yeah. Okay. Like the intersection of, yeah, that is the in-touch triangle and uh, I meant the, like. Oh, tangent. okay. So you intersect the tangents of the, in A, B, and C to the circumcircle. All right. So let me, um... And then basically, well, I'm kind of assuming the problems are true, but um, when I draw that, but uh, it's okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, we will also take the R prime as the intersection of like T, this... B, and uh, the, the tangent. 
Okay. All right. So I uh, see. Oops. Thanks for joining us. down Dr. maybe see a bit. Yeah, let me let me try to make the tangential triangle look better. Um, so yeah, it's hard to make the tangential triangle look good without making this all squished together. Let's see. Uh, let me try my best. <laughs> Sorry. But but you want to see this intersection point over here, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that point G and uh, E are not necessary in my solution. So maybe okay. you can hide it. Okay, I'll hide them for now. It, it basically doesn't introduce any new points, just like uh, computes some ratios. Okay. So yeah, without point G or point E. Yeah, yeah, um, both. Um, yeah, then the diagram gets easier. Okay, so. All right. Uh, okay, so. Um, we want to prove that uh, OR, OR prime is the angle bisector of uh, that angle MON, but it is the same angle as uh, GOE. Okay. And so, that, that is like the motivation why I drew in the tangential triangle. Oh, I see. So, so angle MON is angle GOE. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And we basically now want to prove that uh, ER prime or R prime G is OE or OG. Okay. So, so how do we um, how do we define R prime here? Is it where TD intersects uh, this? Yeah. Okay. And so. Okay, so we want to show that this is bisector. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, uh, BD or DC, mm -hmm. that is uh, AB or AC by angle bisector theorem. And also, BD over DC is equal to uh, sine of BTD, angle BTD. Mm -hmm. over sine uh, DTC. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we have computed this, those ratios of sines. It will be useful uh, because we'll use it again in uh, triangle ETG. So um, let me just check. Uh, I always forget uh, like uh, uh, like I always, always uh, like mm, never mind. Uh, okay, so uh, sine of ETR prime over R prime TG that is uh, uh, AB over AC, mm -hmm. and that times TE over TG should be equal to ER prime over R prime G. I think. I wonder if we can use projective geometry instead of trig. So like, um, let's say we take, because we can project B, T, and C, B, D, and C through T to E, R prime, and G. So really we would need one more point. Um, we could either make it the intersection of this with B, C, or we could make it the midpoint of B, C that we project through. But I wonder if that would be, so yeah, um, I don't know. Like we could just do trig. I just wonder if there might be, um, yeah, I don't know, or, or maybe not. Yeah, what if we, I think, I think that might be a way to do it with just projective geometry. So like, what if we take the midpoint of BC and basically this is the angle bisector of this, right? So if we draw TH and let it intersect this, then maybe we could like use the angle bisector theorem. You, you kind of see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. If we could do that, that would be much better than <laughs> trig bash. Sorry. So, um, 
Yeah, let's see. Can I make point D a little farther away? So uh, it's, it's hard to do, do it. Um, yeah, I think D and H are just going to be close together. I think we might just have to deal with that. Uh, so, okay. So H is the midpoint of BC. And so let me draw this. Yeah, yeah. I think with this uh, one projection, we just... Uh we get the same like equation which I got by um, trigonometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I think we also need a trick to prove it. Maybe, maybe we need it, but uh, I thought about using the double angle formula or something. Okay, let's see. So yeah, we still might need some trig. So let's see. So um, basically we have, Um, the cross ratio BD or BC DH uh, should be equal to uh, E um, G. Sorry, this the diagram is uh, too crowded. So, so yeah, that, that, maybe that's a little easier to see. So E G. Um, R prime I. All right. So this is BD over CD. Um, the left side is BD over CD. Um, could you please so explain how did you get the cross ratio? Yeah. Why are they equal to each other? So yeah, I have these four points, B, C, D, and H. And if I project them through oh. T, so on onto this line. Oh, right. So B goes to E, mm -hmm. C goes to G, D goes to R prime, and H goes to I. Okay, got it. I just didn't see how they were projected at first. Oh, okay. it's all right. Um, so yeah, I'll add that projecting through T onto EG. And we have that. So yeah, I'm gonna add some more, like I'm gonna define H and stuff later, but let's see, let's see how this works for now. So, so BD over CD is equal to ER prime over GR prime. Times um, times I I G over I E. All right. Um, and I G over I E is T G over T E by the angle bisector theorem. So. You can also use the angle bisector theorem in the first uh, left hand side. Uh, for this? Yeah, because uh, it is AB over AC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this means that AB over AC is equal to um, an ER prime over GR prime. Uh, we'll just leave that, but. But the other one is TG over TE. And yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see how much this helps. So, um, so we can like substitute uh, in here prime over R prime G. Uh, OE or OG, and that is what we need to prove. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we need to show that this is OE over OG. Um, so, we want to prove that AB over AC times TE over TG is uh, OE over OG. Yeah. So, I'll rewrite this a little bit like this.
Uh, this is TE over TG. Okay, so we can, can we show this is OE over OG? Uh, let's see. It's like someone else joined. Hey, Crew Tarth, thanks for joining us. Um, so we're working on the first problem. Um, Timo had an interesting idea, and then Stefan had a different idea. So I think we're pretty close. Um, have you been on the sessions before, uh, Crew Tarth? Hello. Have you been on the sessions? Oh, you've seen the videos. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, we can basically uh, write both of those ratios in sines of some angles. Okay. And also the final one that uh, OE over OG. This is like a half of uh, a sine of half of angle G over half of angle E. So actually, I wonder if we can use. Um, oh, actually, never mind. I was gonna. Okay, so so T E over T G, we can, yeah, rewrite it um, as like a ratio of sines, right? So sine E over sine G, um, and then yeah, do we want it? Is there a way around using double angle formulas? I feel like there has to be a. Let's see. Uh, maybe, maybe you can find some similar triangles. I don't know. Yeah, there has to be some similar triangles. So, so OE over OG, um, basically, that's the same as OE over OA times OA over OG, which is um, OB, OE over OB. Uh, times OG over OC, and yeah, let's see if there's any similar triangles here. So, um, well, TBH, okay, because TBH is similar to TOB, but we want triangle OBE, so yeah. Um, yeah, and OB is like an altitude in this triangle, so yeah, I know, well, so ONH is similar, so ONH is similar to OET, right, and OMH is similar to Oh wait, no, that's not necessarily true. So what well, well actually is that true? Yeah, I, I know it can be bashed. I just want to see if there's uh just spend a couple minutes seeing if there's an easier way before we so this looks like this is cyclic, right? Is that is that obvious? Powerful point. Uh, power of a point. Yeah, so so this is cyclic. Um, so NH, so TE over NH is um, basically the ratio of similarity of the two, right? So that would be OE over OH. Yeah, and then um, Oh, that looks good since NH is a half of AC. Yeah. Okay. So you basically get TE or AC. Yeah. Okay. So we have ON times OE is OB square, which is OH times OT. So OE, um, sorry, ON times OE is OB squared. Which is OH times OT.
that means that uh, ENHT is cyclic. And then similarly, GMHT is cyclic. All right. So then uh, once we know that we have, that means that uh, ET over HN is, uh, is, yeah, or H, yeah, I, yeah, we'll eventually get there, but ET over HN is OE over OH. So, OH and um, GT, GT over HM. Uh, you should probably write uh, this the other like uh, ratio the on over ot it looks much uh, much better than oe over oh so ot over on ot over o ot over on yeah yeah, yeah. okay um and then GT, GT over HM is, is OT over OM. So basically when we divide these two, we get TE over TG um, times HN over HM would be, so the OTs would cancel and we get OM over ON. Um, so OM over ON, that... That is equal to OE over OG. Is OE over OG. Okay, so... Yes, okay, perfect. So... Dividing the two, um, we get um, TE over TG is equal to um, ON over OM times uh, uh, HN over HM. And that is equal to, um, uh, so ON over OM is OG over OE. Um, and then this is HN is, um, HN is AC over two. And this means that um, th this means that um, so, so I'll just write it like this: uh, AB over AC um, ER prime over GR prime is equal to that EG, which is equal to um, oh, whoops, sorry, I gotta put the, and this is equal, would be equal to uh, OE over OG. That means that uh, OR prime by sex EOG I'll say MON 
And that means that R prime equals R, which means that AR is tangent to ABC. All right, so this is basically the full solution. Let's see if it all fits down here. Okay. All right, so we have it all fitting down there. Um, let me just add like the definitions V and G. So I'll say let PEG be the tangential triangle. Triangle of ABC and H the midpoint of BC. May I ask something? Uh, yes. Um, how did you get the IG over IE equal to PG over PE? It's uh, the second and third line in the solution. So IG over IE mm -hmm. um, is uh, TG over TE. Okay, so I got that because uh, TH is an angle bisector. Oh, here. okay. Okay, I see. Well, yeah, because this is isosceles and H is the midpoint. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Right. So we successfully solved this and avoided trigonometry. So that's pretty cool. All well, right. And, um, so how did you get the, those ratios underneath the line? Similarly, G and HD is the quick. How did you get those? So, um, so, so you're asking these ratios, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, basically triangles, if we know ENHT is cyclic, then that means triangle ONH is similar to triangle OTE. Um, and so, because um, basically angle O, if, if ENHT is cyclic, then angle ONH is equal to angle ETH. Um, because like in a cyclic quadrilateral, basically the opposite angles add up to 180. Mm -hmm. So um, this angle is 180 minus this angle, which is the same as this angle mm -hmm. and the same with the other. So triangles O and H and O, T, E are similar. And so if they're similar, mm -hmm. E, T and H, N are two sides of those triangles. And OT and ON are two other sides. So the ratios have to be the same. So in short, um, NH is anti parallel to ET? Yes. Okay. Exactly. All right. Very cool. So I'll move on to the next one. So this is a middle riddle. So supposedly easier. Um, so here is a problem with isogonal conjugates. So yeah, if any of you don't know what isogonal conjugates are, I'll explain it in just a second. Um, so we have a triangle ABC, and I is the inner circle. All right, and it's tangent at D, E, and F. And I, D intersects E, F at T. So I think um, there's a famous lemma here. I think this is the Iran lemma. It says that A, T is, is a median of triangle A, B, C, right? So, So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure um, that is true, but uh, it is not called by random lemma. Uh oh, it's just a different lemma or something. Yeah, I don't know if it has a name, but it is like a standard configuration. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, there we go. So the reflection of I over A is X. Um, so I'm going to reflect about a point. So if I reflect I about A, that's point X. And we want to show that I and T are isogonal conjugates with respect to X, with respect to triangle XBC. So I'll explain what that means in just a second. Um, 
Yeah, point D keeps disappearing. So there we go. That should be good. All right. So when I, by isogonal conjugates, um, what that means, it means a couple of things. So it means that angle IBC is angle TBX and angle ICB is angle TCX and angle IXB is angle TXC. So basically like if you take points I and P and you connect them to any of the three vertices, um, then it forms like the same angles. So TXC is IXB and TBX is IBC and TCX is ICB. That's what I saw on conjugates are. Um, okay. Uh, thanks for joining uh, Soki and, uh, and Anna. Um, so we're on the second problem. Uh, the first one was really fun. Um, so yeah, if, and if any of you have questions, yeah, feel free to, um, yeah, just put in the chat or you can just ask me. Um, Intersect B, T, B, D, C. Okay. Then it should, uh, I mean, I just noticed that that intersection point lies on uh, B, I, X. Okay. Purple. Okay, so you're saying B, I, G, X is cyclic? Yeah. That's interesting. And AT passes through the midpoint of BC. I think that can be proven with projective geometry or a couple ways. Um, yeah, yeah, basically, That should be able to be proven with projective geometry, although I'm not going to do it right now. But yeah, AT passes through the midpoint of BC. Because what we could do, here, here's the idea of, of, of the proof I had in mind. Basically, if, if we can show the cross ratio, so if I, if I draw the midpoint of EF, so AEF is isosceles, if we can show the cross ratio FKTE is the same as a cross ratio BJHC, which should just be a, a not that hard of a calculation because K is the midpoint of EF, so that makes the cross ratio easier. H is the midpoint of BC, and then this is an angle bisector. So all we have to do is show those cross ratios are the same, and then that would show that A, T, and H are collinear. So I think that's the idea, but um, yeah, I don't know if there's an easier proof. Um, yeah, okay. All right. Um, add in the intersection of CT and AB. Okay. It will be useful. I wonder if GJ is parallel to BC. Yeah, and GJ is parallel and is also tangent to in circle. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, if you take any point on EF and like intersect BT and CT, let's uh, take T as the variable point, then uh, you will have a tangent. Interesting. And so this is the topmost point of the in circle. So that gives us a lot of information. So we know angle IBC is half of angle ABC. So we want to show angle TBX is half of angle ABC. Um, all right.
Yeah, so it's basically equivalent to saying show that angle TBX equals angle IBC. So yeah, we could kind of just write that as a statement of the problem for people that don't know isogonal conjugates. Um, so we want to show TBX equals IBC. So that's, that's the same as saying that P and I have the same pedal circle, right? But we know that one of the points on the pedal circle is the same. Uh, it's D. So we'd have to show that the other two also are. Uh, the I... problem is equivalent to showing that X, G, I, B is cyclic. Oh, really? Yeah, you can angle chase after that. Okay. So did you just notice this was cyclic with GeoGebra or you, you could prove it too? Just noticed it. Okay. So yeah, angle IBX, yeah, that would be 180 minus XGI. I don't know if that's how, oh, oh no, we, we really want angle T, yeah, GBX. So GBX is GIX, okay, which is GIA. All right, so let's see if we can show that that's cyclic. Can you intersect AB with XC? Uh, yes. Oh man, I knew it would do that. Oh no, uh, I meant with the, cir with the circle. Oh, the uh, circle, all right. Okay, let's try to make that a little farther away from the line. Maybe like that. Because now um, LG should be parallel to AI. Oh, really? Yeah, because of the same angles. Okay. So this is what we want to prove. Okay. XG and XJ are isogonal. Okay. I wonder if, uh, sorry, there's a lot of ideas people are mentioning here. So Krutarth, do you think you have a solution to the problem? So, okay, not yet, but it's an idea. So you're saying we want to show X, G and X, J are isogonal. And I think you use the isogonal line lemma, right? Okay, so H, K, we want to see if it's parallel to AI. I think it would, uh, actually, maybe not. Let me see. Oops, sorry. I need the line instead of the line segment. Uh, HK, no, HK is not parallel to AI. Um, so, But if we showed that XG and XJ are isogonal, that would, like, are you saying that would show that XT and XI are isogonal from this angle? 
And then my question is, would we know they're also isogonal from the other two angles? Like even if we knew xj and xg are isogonal, that would mean, yeah, that'll show it from x, yeah. So yeah, for those of you that are curious, if you look on my channel, that would be the video on the isogonal line lemma where I talk about that. It's way, way back before I did all the live streams. Um, okay, so we wanna show BIGX cyclic. So, and then Timo, you're saying if it is cyclic, then GL is parallel to IX. Uh, yes, because um, then, or we want to prove that there are these two equal angles. Angle IBG should be equal to angle LBX, and therefore XL should be equal to GI. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that would basically be, yeah, because because we want to show the right song and all, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, I think we can do this with an angle chase, maybe, because, um, I, okay, I, I would at first define um, the point L, and then I want to prove that BIGL is cyclic. And this should be proven by an angle chase. So L is the point on line AB, such that LG is parallel to AI. Okay. So I'm going to hide this for just a second. All right. And then we should be able to uh, calculate angle GIB. Okay. Um, and this should be 180 degrees minus BAC divided by two. And okay, A angle GIB? Yes. And therefore, we get that um, L, G, I, and B should be cyclic. And now if we reflect I over, over point A, then X, L, G, I must also be cyclic because X, L, G, I is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. And therefore, we five points lie on a circle. Okay. So then all five have to lie on a circle. So that basically would solve the problem. Okay. So I'm gonna start writing this up. So let the parallel through G. So yeah, do we, um, yeah, we need point G. So let- You don't need J and H, I think. Okay, so we don't need J and we don't need H. Um, do we need K? We have to pr prove that BTG is uh, that these points lie on one line. And I think we need K for this. We, we do need K. So like, yeah, how do we define G? Is G just where BT intersects AC? Um, and yeah, then do we need that GK is tangent? I'm not sure. So, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll start by just saying let VT intersect AC at G. Um, let's see how far we can get. So let uh, BT intersect uh, AC at G. And let the parallel through G to AI meet AB at L. No. Sorry, it's covering up the diagram. Um, okay, so yeah, it's not hard to show this is an isosceles trapezoid. So first, we yeah, we want to show BLGI is cyclic. Um, At first, you have to prove that uh, if we have the tangent of G to the in-circle, that GK is parallel to BC. That's the first step. OK, so we, we do have to prove that. OK. Yes. Um, and then after that, it would be an angle chase to show that BLGI is cyclic? Yeah. OK. Um, and I, we can prove that these uh, the, the, the GK and BC is parallel can be proven by projective geometry because if we introduce the two intersection points of B T with the in circle. Yeah. And then project through point T. Okay. okay. So, that makes sense. Yeah. We have F M D and the last point is harmonic and then we project through point T. Okay. <laughs> this, won't, this won't be easy getting that point. Let's see. Yeah, so it feels like this is a common trick where you have a harmonic quadrilateral and then you project like through the intersection of the diagonals. Or not the intersection of the diagonals, you project through a point on one of the sides. Um, so, yeah, this it's hard to make this diagram look nice, unfortunately. But um, so yeah, M K N E is harmonic, and then if we project through T, that would be the same as saying that we want to show that M N uh, K B is harmonic, um, or sorry, M N M N F D is harmonic, and we know that's true. Okay, so. Um, so let BG intersect the in circle at M and N. Also, that statement can be proved uh, by Bran Branchon's theorem. Branchon's theorem? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, Brianchon's theorem on DMF KNE. Um, I thought about uh, adding in the intersection of CT and AB, and then just like, actually, uh, yeah, actually defining K, and then let uh, the tangents at K intersect AC and AB, and then prove that. Uh, we have a uh, four coherent uh, lines. Okay, that can be done by branches theorem. I think I see what you're doing. Um, I'm just going to finish writing it up like this, but that's also a pretty cool way to do it. Um, so we have N K M E is harmonic. That's a harmonic quadrilateral. And then if we project through T, 
well, well we want to show this, but so we, we know that we know that N F M B is harmonic. Um, this is because NF and the tangents at F, NM and the tangents at F and B concur. So then we can project these four points through T. And this is this is that magic trick where we project to a point that's not actually on the circle. Um, and, and then we get another, then we get that NMKE is harmonic. Should be a comma. And so that means that, um, so I'll say let, let DI, I'm going to define point K, let DI meet I at K. So, so since this is a harmonic quadrilateral, then that means uh, GK is tangent to I. Okay. And then, all right. So then we try to show that BLGI is cyclic. And you said that was an angle chase, right? So you try to calculate angle GIB. Okay, and we kind of know that because if we know that those are tangents, then this is like half of KIE. Um, so yeah, okay. So angle GIB, um, that should be half that's angle GIK plus KIB. And GIK is half of KIE. Um, and KIB is is 180 minus BIB. So and we want to show we want to show that this is this is 180 minus GLB which is the same as, um, so GLB is the same as A over two. So we, we wanna show that KIE over two minus BIB is like A over two. Um, so, so KIE over two is, is 90. Okay, so yeah, really this is just an angle chase is equal to uh, 180 um, plus 90 minus angle CIV over two um, minus angle BIV over two. And then this should simplify to uh, 180 minus angle A over two. Um, because CID and BID, yeah, this, it's just an angle chase, uh, or it's just a calculation. So, okay, XBG, okay, so yeah, you just wrote out the final step. So 180 minus A over two, and that's gonna be 180 minus GLA over two. Okay, so I'll break this into another line. Um, and this means GIBL is cyclic. C 
So, yeah. Um, but then by symmetry, GL XI is an isosceles trapezoid. Um, that's true because like X is the reflection over A and G and L are symmetric with respect to A. Um, so because because this is parallel. So yeah, so this is going to be um, and, and these angles are equal. So okay, so basically, I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll write it this way. So X and I are symmetric with respect to A, and so are G and L, since um, basically angle LAX equals angle GAI. GAI. Um, and GL is parallel to AI. And so that means that GL, GL XI is a cyclic isosceles trapezoid. Trapezoid. And that means that GLXIB, GLXBI is cyclic. And then we have that final angle chase that Stefan put in the chat. Thanks for putting that there. I can't copy that little, that darn angle sign. It doesn't, GeoGebra doesn't like the less than sign. So I'm gonna have to type it up, I think. Uh, but it's okay. It still helps that you already wrote it out. That's angle B over two, and that's angle CBI. Okay. So let's see if this all fits in one line at the very bottom. So, so XBG is equal to CBI. And then similarly, yeah, I'm running out of room here. So, Sim similarly, um, X, so, so, so I'll write it like this, that XBT and then similarly, um, angle XCT is equal to angle BCI. And that means that I and T are isogonal conjugates. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next problem. So yeah, I spent a long time just writing up the solution, but I think it's probably helpful for people that don't know as much about um, isogonal conjugates. So, all right, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. It's only 10, 10, so we're, we're not, we're going pretty fast. So this one, um, so yeah, after this one, the next problems are probably a little harder. Um, so we have a cyclic quadrilateral. Are we gonna do uh, riddles after this? Oh, th these are the riddles. Uh, oh, I mean, oh, you mean uh, the harder ones, yeah, yeah after yeah. this. After this one, we're going to do the riddles. Or do, do okay. you want to go straight to the riddles?